In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Let us begin by calling to mind our sins, and humbly confessing them to Almighty God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against Thee through our own fault, in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve thee in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who declarest thy almighty power, most chiefly in showing mercy and pity, mercifully grant unto us such a measure of thy grace that we, running the way of thy commandments, may obtain thy gracious promises and be made partakers of thy heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. From the first book of Kings, Elijah himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly, an angel touched him and said to him, get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him, and said, get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food for 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the Mount of God. This is the word of the Lord.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which you were marked with a, seal, with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. <clears throat> they were saying, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me. And I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learnt from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, in this Gospel passage from St. John, Jesus talks about himself as the bread of life. And the passage follows on from St. John's account of the feeding of the 5,000 and a dispute after that with the Jews. And very unusually, the same sequence of events can be found in the Gospels of St. Matthew and St. Mark. Usually St. John is very different, but here the sequence is just the same. Except that in Matthew and Mark, there is at this point a puzzling conversation with the disciples, which St. John seems to have replaced with this discourse which leads up to him talking about himself as the bread of life. So why has he done this? Well, in St. Matthew and St. Mark, it starts off with the Pharisees and Sadducees asking Jesus for a sign. And he refuses to give them a sign, he says, except for the sign of Jonah. Now you may remember, Jonah was, according to the story in the Old Testament, was swallowed by a whale, spent three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, and then the whale vomited him up and he survived. And so this became a sort of um, kind of forerunner, as it were, of Jesus' resurrection. And when Jesus refers to it, he's thinking ahead to his own resurrection. But then in this conversation in Matthew and Mark, um, Jesus gets into a boat with his disciples and is going across the Sea of Galilee and he says to them, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Well, you know, leaven means yeast. And of course, yeast is what you use to make bread rise. But, I mean, these days, you, if you want to make bread, you go to Tesco's and you get a little, uh, little tin full of dried yeast granules and it's all terribly reliable. But in the old days, you couldn't do that. You had to use fresh yeast, which came usually from homemade brewing of beer. And it, was un it wasn't so reliable, it could go off. And if you used it in bread, it made really nasty bread. So Jesus says, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Well, the, the disciples are there with him in the boat. and. They, they don't know what he's talking about. They, they, they think he's perhaps talking about some bad bread that, that, that they've got from the Pharisees. And they say, well, well I don't know what, you, what you're going on about. We haven't even got any bread here. And then Jesus says, how can you say you've got no bread? You've just seen me feeding 5,000 people. Don't you understand yet? So here's this odd conversation. It's not really very easy to see the thread that runs through it. And it ends up with Jesus saying, don't you understand yet? Well, St. John, who may have been the beloved disciple, and so may have had private conversations with Jesus, at any rate, he has reflected on this on this conversation. And he does understand, and he wants us to understand, and that's why he begins this passage about the bread of life. So what he tries to do is to go behind that conversation and bring out what he thinks Jesus' inner thoughts were. Well, so there's the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, bad yeast. 
What is this yeast that Jesus is talking about, this leaven? Well, he realizes it means their teaching. St. Matthew recognizes that as well. So beware the teaching of the scribes and uh, of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Okay, but what are they teaching about? So what is the dough, as it were, that the yeast would get put in? Well, the dough is obviously God, the things of God, and the word of God, especially in the Jewish scriptures. So this is the dough, the bread, that they should be making come alive, which they should be making palatable by mixing in their teaching, but which actually they're turning bad and bitter. But, thinks St. John, where then is the word of God to be found most accessible? Where, where can we find the word of God at its most palatable? Where is it really nice bread, good bread? Well, of course, he would say, Jesus himself is the eternal word. He is the word of God who's come to live like one of us in order to enable us to understand what God is like and understand what he's given us and what he wants, us, what he wants of us. So in the metaphor then, Jesus becomes the bread of life. And of course, the yeast that he must have had in him, the life of God, was such good yeast that it really did make him rise. So, what St. John is doing, or beginning to do in this passage, is to unfold this whole idea that the bread that Jesus gives us is not just physical bread, as in the feeding of the 5,000. He is himself what we can feed on. He is himself spiritual bread, a gift from God himself that we can absorb and which will help us to rise. Now, of course, he has in, in, in the front of his mind the Last Supper and the Eucharist, so what is it then that we receive when we receive that little round wafer? Of course, on the one hand, it is natural, physical bread. Like all bread, it contains protein, starch, vitamins. It's quite capable of nourishing us and sustaining life. It can build up our body and give us energy. But it is also spiritual bread, because when it is consecrated by the prayer that we all join in with our Amen, when it is consecrated, it is, as it were, taken into the person of Christ, and it receives the character and purpose and nature of Christ we don't need to inquire too closely into the mechanics of it. But once consecrated, it does what the body of Christ would do. We offer it to the Father, and it, is, it becomes a part of Christ's own offering of himself on the cross. If we venerate it, we are venerating the Lord. When we receive it, we are receiving the Lord. So he, through this physical and spiritual bread, he enters our system, he nourishes our spirit, and he gives us spiritual energy. Well, now, in the first reading, we heard about Elijah, and Elijah was fleeing for his life from the wicked Queen Jezebel, whose 450 false prophets he had just slain. And 
Jezebel was absolutely, she, she was after him and she was going to kill him. And he was making a long journey from the northern tip of Israel right down to the south. And he was worn out and depressed and ready to die. And the angel of God came and left him bread, food from God for his journey. There's a reference to uh, the children of Israel in the gospel on their way out of Egypt, lost in the wilderness, but on their way to the promised land, running out of food. God provided them with bread from heaven, manna, food for their journey. In the feeding of the 5,000, which just precedes the gospel, shortly before, there's been a huge crowd following Jesus around the Sea of Galilee. It's got late. Uh, they really want to get home. They've got no food, however, and that's when Jesus multiplies the loaves and the fishes to give them food for their journey home. Well, we are all on it, our own journeys. God gives us our daily bread. Occasionally he might do so miraculously as he has in the past. But he also gives us here and in the teaching of Christ our spiritual food. Like the children of Israel, we are on our way to the promised land. Like Elijah, we're trying to get and hope to get to the mountain of God. Like the crowd, we hope to get home. So Jesus gives us the food that we need for that journey. It is himself that he gives us. And if we are open to him and want him and welcome him, then he will see us to our destination. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate he suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. In the psalm we learn that people who seek refuge in God are happy. So we now entrust all our needs and cares to our loving Father. Heavenly Father, we pray that Christians throughout the world may be renewed in their faith and strengthened on their journey to your kingdom. We pray especially for our friends from this parish who are on pilgrimage, that it may be an enriching time for them and a time in which they grow closer to one another. And we pray especially for the strengthening of the service of God in this parish. Lord, in your mercy, we pray that all those who lack food or lack clean water or the essentials of life may have their dignity respected and their needs met and their rights upheld. We remember especially those who face crop failure. We remember those who are on our streets. And we remember all those displaced by war. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those who are depressed or who despair and are tempted to give up on life. We pray that they may be healed of their wounds and restored to wholeness. Lord, in your mercy, We pray for the people of Ukraine and the people of the Holy Land and all who are caught up in war and violence. And at this time we pray especially for Adam and Leah Levy. Lord, in your mercy, And we pray also for the sick and the distressed, among them Mavanwi Morgan, Eileen Hayward, Pauline Green, Mark Watson, Bill Marney, Mark Albrook, John Clark, Benji, Joanna Edwards, Sheila Kemp, Gareth Vaughan, Winnie Austin, Mary Scott, Andrew Moran, Lee Whelan, Peter Bevis, Douglas Smith, Peter Duffin, David Fuller, Camilla, Camilla Southern, and any others known to us. Lord, in your mercy, 
and we pray too for those who have recently departed. Jacqueline died, Edith Barker, Geoffrey Level, Seema Pariso, Dylan Pariso, Jane Turner, Simon White, Barbara Parsons, Cecilia Whitaker, Patricia Weiner, and for those whose year's mind falls at this time, Annabella Baines, Emily Clara MacDonald, and Harry Clifford. And we pray too for our own families and friends departed, and for the benefactors of this church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So we pray that those who have died may be welcomed to the mountain of God and admitted into the Lord's presence. We ask for the prayers of Our Lady and all the saints as we say together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Lord our God, when we are faced with the difficulties and challenges of life, help us always to remember that you are with us and that you never abandon us. Give us new strength and vigour to work for your kingdom by serving our brothers and sisters. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We are the body of... Would you like to stand, uh, if you're able? Uh, we are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Sam. Oh, man. 
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. <clears throat> o God, who hast ordained a sacrifice, that we, offering the same to thy honor and glory, might receive thereby the healing of our infirmities. Mercifully grant that this our present offering may be acceptable in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the
Thanks be to God. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita Dulcero, et spes nostra salve. At te clamamus, exoles fini ever, at te suspiramus, Gementes et flentes in ac lacrimarum vale. Ea ergo advocata nostra, illos tuos misericordes oculos ad nos converte. Et Iesum benedictum fructum ventris tubi, nobis post hoc exilium ostende. O clemens, O pia, O multis virgo mari, Jesus, Lord, we look to Thee. Let us in Thy name agree. Show Thyself the Prince of Peace. Be doest life forever cease. Make us of one heart and mind, courteous, pitiful, and kind, to thy church the pattern give, show how true believers live. Free from anger and from pride, let us thus in Thee abide. All the depths of love express, all the heights of holiness. Love all hatreds has destroyed, Rendered all distinctions void, color, race, and factions fall. Thou, O Christ, art all. 